Well, let's talk about 2D projectile motion. We're going to be ignoring air resistance in this case. I put this right here because this is kind of, I imagine like, you know, someone being launched out of a cannon at some angle or something. So your actual path, let's say you went out to this cannon right here, you this, this projectile motion, if you're launched upwards at least, would be something like, you know, some sort of, some sort of nice parabola. So some kind of nice shape like this. Okay. So I'll just write down parabola. Now, what's important with this though, we're going to have to be good at breaking up vectors into components. That's going to be the really important skill that I'm going to talk about right now. So in your data booklet, they actually give you this. They say, hey, if you have some quantity A, okay, and this quantity A, and over here, by the way, we'll just use a V here. So this quantity A here, uh, what's going to happen is... Um, if you wanted to find, uh, this A is projected at some sort of angle here above the horizontal. But we're going to be needing to not figure out A, but figure out this height. In other words, we're going to need to know this one, like how long is this? We're going to call that AV here, this length right here. And we're going to need to know AH here, this piece right here. It turns out if we do this right here, you can use uh, trigonometry. Remember Sokotoa? That's how you solve this because this is a right angle. But basically, remember sine is opposite over hypotenuse, and cosine is uh, cosine of an angle is adjacent over the hypotenuse. Basically, then uh, you can use that to work out that hey, a h is just going to be a at cos theta, and this thing here is going to be a sine theta. Now that's in general. I think a more useful version of it, if we have V, like V is a velocity, because I think this A doesn't make much sense to me. So I prefer this one right here. This one right here, I just like to write it like this and say, ah, that means a VX, let's see, the X component of the speed or the velocity here, this X component, this length right here of this vector right here, this is going to be just V cos theta. I prefer this version. This is going to be V sine theta. Is there a nice easy trick to remember them? Kind of. I just think of sine kind of rhymes with y. It doesn't really, but it has an i sound only. So sine, y, there we go. And the other one just goes. But I, I kind of like this version right here better. So I'll say, you know, more useful. But this version right here, this is actually on your data booklet. So, I mean, I suppose that, that is good because you can actually find this. All right, so what is this all going to mean for us? Well, that means that when we have two-dimensional motion, which means, you know, something is launched at an angle, it could also be, by the way, horizontal, just that, you know, something is going to be having this weird curve stuff, there's going to be an easy way to solve it. But the first trick is you have to break it up into components. So step one is, for example, horizontal direction. Let's just consider that one. Oh, I like how this one here fixes my stuff here. Also, we're going to have vertical direction here. Look how awesome I am at making straight lines. There we go. So... In the horizontal direction, it's really important when we consider uh, what's going on in acceleration. If there's no air resistance, turns out it's not accelerating. This is the key piece right here. Okay, so in the horizontal direction, it does not accelerate. So it's super easy then. If the acceleration is zero, that means we can just use just velocity then or speed, sorry, is distance over time. We can just use that. That's nice and easy. Only in the X component. So that means, you know, you would take a... Uh, you know, if you had a vector that's angled up at an, uh, some angle here, you'd have to figure out the horizontal piece of that. And that horizontal one in that horizontal land or world, uh, it doesn't accelerate. It's just this. But in the vertical direction, if you can figure out the sort of Y piece of the velocity or the speed, it does accelerate. This one here. So this one, you do use your equations for e accelerated motion. In other words, you use your SUVAT here. Okay, so that's going to be the key. And just to put it all together, so step one, uh, when I'm on an exam, I just look at, well, first break it up into components. That means you need to find out, you know, what is Vx and what is Vy. And the Vx, because it's, uh, you know, this one here, it's no acceleration. I'm just, I'm just rewriting what we just did up above. So there's no acceleration. So that means, you know, we just have V equals distance over time. And that's going to be the Vx. Whereas in Vy, it does accelerate, so that means use SUVAT. So this is kind of like my little, my little trick here. That's how I solve things. So let's do an example, but the example I want to give you is a less complicated one. It's going to be one where we don't need to break up into components, but we're still going to consider horizontal and vertical. So we're still going to consider this. It's just going to be a little bit simpler. So we're going to have a situation where you're just launched off a cliff, but horizontally. <laughs> so I consider this like a unicorn that's projectile vomiting because, well, in this case, 
you're going to have actually if you draw the this cliff and you're you know, landing into some water here this car is going to be launched actually horizontally and what's its path going to do well this car is actually going to go kind of like this and then down like this okay that's really what's going to happen so what are we asking for here? Well, it goes horizontally off a cliff to land in the water down below. And the cliff's height is 51 meters above the water. Ooh, that's important. I'll write that down. That's 51 meters. Okay. And the car initially drives off the cliff with a speed of 42 meters per second. And notice, that's all horizontal. In other words, if I wanted to do this, I would actually then figure out, well, what's Vx and what's Vy? This really helps. So in this case right here, in the x component of the velocity, is just it's all horizontal. It's 42 meters per second. And what's the initial, uh, the initial speed in the y direction? It's actually zero. Now, when it lands, it's going to have something else. It's going to have a totally different, you know, downward speed. But when it first initially takes off, right at the beginning here, you know, at this point right here, 1, right here, right when it takes off, at 1, this is what's happening. Now at 2, who cares? I don't know. So the question, first of all, is, uh, actually, maybe say that, that'll be two. So how long is the car in the air before it hits the water? It sounds complicated, but we're just asking for time. We want time. So let's just consider this then. So this is basically just in the vertical direction. Let's just use the vertical land. Okay, so we're just going to use, you know, the, the vertical world because that's going to help us here. Uh, I think that's the easiest. So in the vertical world, well, we're going to use, you know, SUVAT, S-U-V-A-T. Except I'm going to put little Y's everywhere. So U-Y, V-Y, A-Y. That doesn't make sense to have a Y component of time. We're just going to leave it. So the reason I'm doing this is just to remember that I'm in the vertical land, not in horizontal. Horizontal, totally different. Because if you consider this thing vertically, it's the same as if you just dropped this car from rest and just let it drop. As far as the vertical world is considered, that's the same. Now horizontally, which we're going to need here, totally different story. So in this case, then let's consider. So what is the displacement? What does this car do right here? Well, it starts off here, and it ends up dropping 51 meters. So if I want to be really careful, I can actually say minus 51 because it goes down, and I'd sign down as a negative. U, Y, in other words, the initial speed in the Y direction. It's initially zero. What's the final speed in the Y direction? I actually don't know, don't care. A, Y, what's the acceleration in the Y direction? It's negative 9.81, negative because it's accelerating downwards. T, that's actually what I want. I'm going to put a star by that. So do I have any equations that avoid V that have an S, U, A, and T in them? So you have to check in your data booklet for that. Did you find it? I have S equals U, T plus half A, T squared. That'll work. And U, thankfully, is zero, so that's good. That whole thing cancels out. I want to find T. So to do that, let's see here. I want to get rid of the 2 here over the bottom, so I multiply it. That means I'm going to have 2 times S. I also want to divide by A. That means I'm going to end up with T squared equals, let's see, 2S over A. And that means if I want T by itself, it's technically going to be plus or minus the square root of 2S over A. Now, the interesting thing is that I don't technically need to worry about a negative time because negative time doesn't make any sense. So I'll just leave it like this. So let's put in the numbers here. So I'm going to have t equals, let's see, it's going to be square root of 2 times s. s is going to be minus 51. All that over acceleration, which is minus 9.81. Remember I said it's square rooted. Now again, it should be plus or minus, but I only consider the positive. Let me do this on my calculator. Oh, by the way, look, the negative divided by negative, doesn't that give you a positive? So that's good, because time has to be positive. Well, under a square root has to be positive, at least, if you want real answers. Um, and we're going to do this on my calculator. So square root, nice fraction, 2 times, I'll just ignore the negatives, because I just convinced myself they cancel out. Uh, 9.81, whoops, not 4, but 1. I end up with 3.2245. Okay, and to do this to uh, two significant figures, because there's two here and two here, I always have to use the least one. So that means I'm going to say t is approximately equal to, let's see, 3.2 seconds. So it'll take about 3.2 seconds to drop into the water. Okay. Now, how far from the base of the cliff will the car land? So in this case right here, what I care about now I care about, uh, maybe I'll write it like this here in yellow. I care about this distance here. I'll call it S 
in the x direction. Okay, so it's a displacement in the x direction. I want sx. So that means I'm in the vertical world, uh, sorry, horizontal world, I mean. Okay, so this is horizontal world. And remember, no acceleration in the horizontal land. So what does that mean? That means I can just say uh, speed is just equal to distance over time. Well, that means I can make myself an equation. And let's make an equation in the x direction, of course, everywhere. So that means I can say vx equals distance in the x, which is going to be called s with a little subscript x over time. I put subscripts x just to differentiate them from the y's here. So if I do this right here, then what I want to get sx, don't I? So that means sx is going to be equal to, let's see, just vx times t. So let's put in the numbers. And so sx is going to be, well, vx, the x component of the speed, because here, remember, the initial y component was 0. That's because we decided that here. But in the x component, it does go 42 meters per second. So I'll put a 42 here. And that's going to be vx times t. Do I know the time? I sure do. It's actually 3.2. I found that before. So because of that, then I can do this on my calculator. So let's do that. And remember with the answers where you use the answer from before, keep your one with all the decimals. So I'm going to say this thing times 42. I end up with the number of 135.4299981, whatever. Okay, well then I'm just going to put my answer finally to how many significant figures? I'll put it to 2. So that means I'll say the x component here, this distance, is going to be approximately, well, this is going to, I'm, I am only say like a 130, but this 5 makes it round up. So I'll say 140. Um, and I'll say meters, for example. Now in a question on the exam, they'll probably give you even more uh, digits for accuracy. They'll probably give you 3, but just the way I did it, this should be 140. But there we go. So that's how far it'll go before it lands. So the trick was, remember, is to just break it up into components. In this case, it was already broken up for you, in a sense, because this was all horizontal and the vertical speed was zero. So this is really, really important to consider those, because then you go into vertical land is acceleration, and the horizontal land, there's no acceleration, just velocity is distance over time.